Hello, all of my elite creators and Silaholics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to split up a design for an all over sublimation shirt when using a smaller printer, such as an Epson uh, 7710, 7720, and a smaller heat press. If this is your first time viewing any of my videos, I hope you enjoy the content and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to fully design these shirts. I will have a class in February that will go over all of the, um, you know, all of what you need to design something like this and just tips and tricks for that. I also have a premium subscription group, Subaholics Anonymous, that should be releasing in February as well. That's a monthly membership. But if you choose not to do the monthly membership, that class just on all over shirts will be available uh, by mid-February. But in this one, for if you know already know how to design it, I'm just going to show you how to break it up. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. To do this in Silhouette Studio, you will have to upgrade to the business edition so that you can save your design as a JPEG or PNG file. Um, there are third party programs that you can use. I personally don't really care for the quality, but you can use those if you don't want to upgrade to um business edition, especially if you have a PC. Now, if you have a Mac, I'm not really sure what ways um, you can do it, but if you have a uh, PC, you can download PDF Creator. But in this one, I'm gonna do it straight from Silhouette Studio. If you don't have business edition, there are going to be links in the description box that you can go and purchase them from Swing Designs. It is an affiliate link, so I do receive a small commission if you choose to support me and utilize my link to purchase your upgrade. All right, so um, all this is kind of, it's all separated, it's all separate pieces. You can't break it up when it's like that, so it has to just be one big image, all right? Um, I'm going to drag and select over my entire design. So you don't have to make your design page the size of the shirt. Just go ahead and drag and select over the whole thing. Um, your design, you're going to go file, save selection, save to hard drive. And then you're going to name uh, your design. So in this one, I'm going to go ahead and put um, girl boss all. And we're going to come down to save uh, as save as type. And then I'm going to just choose PNG and we're going to hit OK. We're going to have a transparent background. I always just take mine all the way up and then we're just going to hit save. All right. Once that saves, I'm going to open the file back up. Oh, file. I'm going to merge. Um, the one thing with Windows is I love like the quick access. I'm pretty sure Mac has something like it, but I just go to quick access and the last file that I save will be right there. So I'm just going to open that up. All right. You see, it's going to be significantly smaller. Uh, we're going to just click on here. Our height is 31. Now, unfortunately, with uh, with silhouette studio and the version 4.3 as of today which is january 22nd the version that they have for some reason you can't um force it to the size like if you lock it in so make sure that you don't lock it and you just kind of force it to the size that um of your original so this one will be 31 tall and then 36.222 sometimes it still won't let you do it and you may have to and i think i see a mistake on mine let me zoom in yes this is why i don't save it as a png we're going to go back you see what it did to my um my shadow it changed the color of it. And that does happen when you save it as a, PN, um, as a PNG. So I'm going to delete that. I forgot all about that. And we're going to go file. Um, let's select it. Well, I already have it saved. So let's just open up that one. Save it as a JPEG instead of, um, instead of a PNG. So I'm going to go file, merge. Um, I already have the file. 
I'm just going to do a quick access and I'm going to go all over split touch. I recorded this video and then so it decided to close on me. So had that one as a JPEG. We're going to go ahead and open that up. Okay. And you can see this one is a lot bigger. So we're going to note what the size is on here. So again, 31 and then 36222. I'm going to come up here. My height, I'm going to make it 31. It's going to look crazy. <laughs> and then on this side, we're going to go 36.222. All right. And that will be the exact same size as it is over there. And I have some white around the edges of mine. So I'm going to fill mine in. This is why it shut down before because I have these white edges that Silhouette Studio will not pick up when it comes to tracing it. So I'm going to just double click there. Come on. And I'm just kind of masking off this area so that it makes it easier to do a trace and detach on it. Um, I'm going to take that. I'm going to make it black and give it a little bit of weight. And I hate when Silhouette Studio does this. All right, let's go like this. I really hate when it does this. It doesn't really, there it is. Now it's at a one. And then right here, we're going to do it. So right here. And I'm going to make that black and one. And it's not really doing it as one. So we're going to select nothing. We're going to make our point size one and our color black. And that just makes the default now for align that. And oh, it's still not doing it. All right. I'm just going to go make it a dash line, then go back straight, just so that it can make it the right. Oh. There we go. When it's thin like that, it won't pick up. And I think there's a spot right here. So I'm going to do it a line along here as well. And this, again, is just because Silhouette Studio will not trace white. So those will end up being open areas. On my design, when I go to trace and detach, so I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go to my trace tool, put my box around it. There are many people who will do this and they will just cut it based off of this. I particularly don't. I like to see just the, des the design or the shape of the shirt, but you can go and just leave the box. I personally choose not to. All right, we are going to take our threshold up. Bring that down to like 99 and trace and detach. There we go. Pull this out and Delete the rest. Even our lines that we had before, don't need those. Make sure I have it here. So delete point there, delete point there. Okay, so now depending on what size paper you are going to use, uh, you will make a box that size. Okay, if I'm going to print to, let's say, um, 11 by 17 paper, I'm going to set my design page size to 11 by 17 with Silhouette Studio. Uh, because we're not using it to cut, it's best just to set your machine to none. Your cutting mat's going to be none. Um, and then you can make your own custom media size. So if you're going to do 13 by 19, you definitely have to set it to none. Uh, with 11 by 17, you could have a machine on there, but for 13 by 19, you have to have it set to none. All right, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get a um, the rectangle tool. I'm going to just make a box and I'm going to force that to 11 by 
And I think it's going to start to act crazy. Oh, no, there it is. 11 by 17. Enter. And then I'm going to come over here to my uh, offset. I'm going to do an internal offset and I'm going to make it 0.125. That is um, the natural margin that your printer will put on it. So you can't go all the way to the edge. You have to leave the margin where the printer is not going to print anyway. If you try and go and you design it where it goes all the way to the edge, when it prints, it's going to cut away that uh, 0.125 anywhere that's touching the edge and then your design will not line up when you go to piece it together. So this middle one is what we are going to um, cut our design to. So we're going to pull that out and I'm going to pull it over here. I like to pull it down underneath my design and then I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to a line and align to the top and align to the left. Right. Then I'm going to click on it and I'm going to make a couple of duplicates of it. We're going to go over here to the replicate. There are several ways that you can replicate this. The replicate window is going to be probably the easiest. I'm going to tell it to do a row of four just to be on the safe side. Um, yeah, I need it for three wouldn't work because I have that little piece there. And then I'm going to select all four of those. Hold down shift, select my image. And I'm going to tell it to do a column of three. Although I should only need two for this one. Yeah, see, they fit within here. So I can delete all of these. All right, so now I have my design um, set up to where I know I'm going to, at a minimum, need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes or eight sheets of paper. I'm going to actually do this to where I'm going to mix um, a few of them. So it's going to come down to less pages, All right? You're going to make a copy of this. So for however many boxes you have, you're going to make a, um, you're going to make a duplicate of it. So for this one, I have eight boxes. I'm going to need to do this um, eight times. This is how I personally prefer to do it. There are, again, several ways that you can do this. This is how I prefer to do it. I'm sorry, before I do that, I'm going to hold down shift and select my shirt because I don't want to have that selected. I'm going to fill with white. Well, let's do it on this side. So I'm going to come over to my paint palette, fill with white. I'm going to take my transparency all the way down so that I can see through it. That's just going to make it easier to select my boxes um, in the next part of this. So I'm going to go and I need to make a duplicate of this because I am going to need it for later. Uh, well, no, I need this one. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, well, eight to be on the safe side, but I think that um, I counted for the original. All right. I'm going to Click on all the boxes. Well, with this one, I can go every other. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click here, here, and I actually may not need all eight. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to hit delete and that's going to leave me with one, two, three, four, I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to go modify and crop. And let's see. So that one, see, sometimes it won't fully um, separate it and that drives me insane. So I'm going to undo on that one. I'm going to just delete this one and I'm going to delete this one. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to go crop, right? So I have the two there. So here, I don't need this one um, or this one or any of these. I'm going to delete them, select and crop, okay? Now for, so I just need it for actually. For the bottom, we don't need any of these. So I'm going to delete those and then I'm gonna go every other one and crop. And then on this one, again, we don't need these. We don't need the first one or the third one. So I'm going to delete, 
select these. Well, don't even need the last one. We're going to just select here and crop. Now, all these other ones I don't need. I'm going to zoom out and delete all of this. Okay, so that should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there was nothing in the eighth box. That's exactly how I want it to be. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to fill it with white. Again, this is my way of doing it. To me, it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to fill this with white. I'm going to make duplicates of this. So we're going to go... Uh, control one, that's page two, three, four, five, six. I may need seven, right? I'm going to take this piece, hold down shift, select here. We're going to go over to a line and we're going to center them. Oh, wait. And let me make sure that it gave me my margin. Yes, it did. We're going to select that and group it together. Okay. I'm going to select here and here. We're going to choose a line to the center and send this to the back. Select it and group it. I'm going to go ahead and send all of these to the back that we don't have to do it individually. And we're going to click here and here, center them, group it, select here and here, center them and group here and here, center them and group. And then this piece and this piece, I'm gonna put those together and group. Now I'm gonna take all of my pieces, I need this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six pages. And I'm going to center, uh, we're going to center all of them together and then I'm going to center them to the page. What this is going to allow me to do is to send this to print and not have to like worry about moving each one to my, uh, like moving it to my design page. They're all there by putting that white box around it. It blocks out anything behind it. As you can see, I have my margins there. So I'm going to go file, print. I'm going to choose my sublimation printer. I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to choose 11 by 17. Um, no print and cut, which means it's going to mirror this for me. I think this is the one that's set up to mirror it. Yep, so it's going to mirror it for me. It's going to go to 11 by 17. Um, and all of my settings are there. Premium presentation matte, standard. One to more options, custom, go under advanced, Adobe RGB, but I'm going to change this to 1.8 and hit OK. Hit OK. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to hit cancel just because I want you to see where it goes to as far as your margin. So see, I'm right up at that margin on all the sides. So it's not going to cut it off and I'm not going to lose any of my design. So I would go in send this to print. Once it goes and it spools to print, you right click it, send it to the back. Then you would send this one to print. And then we're going to um, send it to the back. You would send this one to print, send it to the back, send this one to print, send it to the back, send this one to print, send it to the back, print this one, send it to the back. And when you are when you see the original one that you started with, you know that you sent all of them to print. And that is how I break it up. Now, as far as piecing them together, um, there are, um, you want, to, you'll have to decide like which ones you want to be on top versus on the bottom because you'll um, basically tape it at a flap. So on certain ones, you may, like when you go to cut, you'll cut like off this side because you're going to, um, well, this is, this is the back edge. So you wouldn't cut this side. Um, 
you would maybe leave this one and then on the other one, you'll cut it and you'll lay it on top of the flap here and tape it down. Uh, so there are tips and tricks when it comes to that, that will be in my full on class or in the videos in my premium subscription group. But um, as far as how to break it up, this is how you would break up the design in Silhouette Studio if you do my method. Again, there are other ways of doing it. My way is not the only way. Some people have other ways of doing it. This is just the way that Shakia chooses to uh, do it and show you guys. But hopefully it will be helpful to you. If you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to go ahead and post them as a comment below. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. Check out my website, www.sillaholicsanonymous.com um, to find out when the class will be available for purchase and also to get more information on my premium subscription group. Uh, if you click on premium subscriptions, the information is there. Um, right now, I'm not taking, um, not the membership is not open. So if you click it, it will allow you to pay, uh, but I don't want you to have to necessarily pay for um you know, a few weeks and it's not fully set up. So this is as of January 22nd. So if you're watching this sometime in the, in the future, you can click on it and choose to join the group from, uh, the premium subscription or premium memberships link on my website, www.sillaholicsanonymous.com. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.